Hi, my name is Jason. And I'm Lorraine. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the bad. Not all things go to plan, especially when you're doing a garden. It's just not the how way it works. And this is just a garden tour of some of the things that just didn't do well for us this year in 2020. The first thing that we're going to share is our tomato plant in the greenhouse. It's not necessarily that it did badly or poorly. Actually, it was just the opposite of that. But I don't like having a tomato plant in the greenhouse, even though it does extremely well. The fact is that we just don't have the space in the smaller greenhouse to grow a massive size tomato plant like that. And I wasn't able to get in here and move around because it's basically turned into a monster. We have cut back this tomato plant many, many times and it's just grown. That is a wonderful thing, but also at the same time, it's just really challenging, especially if there's snakes in here, <laughs> to uh, get in here and get what you need or, or harvest and um, manage what the things are. Like I grew peppers in here and they did really well, but I couldn't really get to them because of this massive one tomato plant. How can we fix that next year? Either we can build a bigger greenhouse or we can just not plant tomatoes in the greenhouse. Or maybe we could just have tomatoes on one side and peppers on the other side and just really heavily trim back the tomato plants and not let them get out of control. These green goddess peppers did really well for us this year in the greenhouse. Uh, actually, everything did pretty well in the greenhouse, um, but these have produced for us quite a bit. Another thing that I felt like did badly in the garden was me. I did not label my pepper plants. Actually, I did label them when they were seeds, and then for some reason when I, they grew and then I transplanted them, I didn't label them. I don't know why. So that did poorly. I wish I would was able to have labeled all my plants because the varieties matter, especially with peppers. Another thing that didn't do so well for us this year was leeks. They grew, they just didn't grow oh, big. Now I think what went wrong with these leeks was that they were eaten by the onion flies. It's those little black flies with the stripes on their wings. And I noticed a lot of them hanging around. Good morning, Bernice. Another thing that didn't do well for us was our green beans. And that was just because I didn't like the variety that I chose. It was the old homestead bean that I chose and I didn't care for the texture. It had a lot of strings in it. Um, I think next year what I would like to do to remedy that would be to go with the Blue Lake beans, which I knew I should have gone with in the first place, but instead I, I had an open package of these and I was like, let me just finish these off for the year and we'll be done. I also tried uh, Tongues of Fire and Dragon's Tongues. I didn't really care for those as well either. They're great beans. Um, they were just a little too novelty for me and I was looking to do some canning and put up some beans and I you can do that with those but I just didn't care for the shape or even like the texture. The next thing that didn't do well for us in our garden was having so many flowers, specifically sunflowers. I just couldn't say no to all of those volunteer sunflowers that were popping up from last year's garden. A lot of times we couldn't get into our row and harvest or plant because of these massive sunflowers that were just in the way. We have these neat little row systems and if something like a giant marigold or uh, this giant bush of calendulas or even a sunflower is growing right in the middle, it makes it really challenging to walk in the walkway and you'll have to just go around. And I felt like that was a challenge for us is just having so many flowers in the garden. Having flowers in the garden is very important. We do like having flowers in the garden, but mostly around the garden, like more like on the borders or strategically placed. These were a lot of volunteers and frankly, they were just in the way. Another thing that we might do differently next year 
and it's not necessarily that just did poorly, well, maybe it did, is I left our shelling beans on the vine a little too long. Now I went and harvested these already and shelled them all out, and we discovered that we had a lot of mold on these beans. Uh, you, as you can see, we get a lot of rain here in North Carolina, and the pods just went black with mold. Sometimes that I've harvested that before and the beans inside are okay, but this year we had an exceptional amount of rain and the beans inside did have mold on them. Now the year before we did have weevils too, so I don't know how we can prevent the weevils, but I think next year what I will do is harvest these pods a whole lot sooner and then let them dry either inside or in the garden shed there. One thing that we struggled with in the garden this year was blight for our tomato plants. I loved our setup. We had these poles and these cages uh, set up where they, we could trellis them along. That did just fine for us. However, we did have a lot of rain and a lot of blight. So I'm not sure what next year looks like, but we, hopefully we can manage that a little bit better. One of the other things that we struggled with this year is the weeds were out of control. I feel like of all the years that we've been doing this, this year the weeds were just, no matter what we put down, the weeds just still grew, grew up. I felt like we did a great job early spring before we had the garden of laying down um, cardboard and old feed bags and even like a thin piece of weed barrier fabric and the weeds still came up and outgrew our garden. One thing that we want to use for next year to combat all of these weeds and get ahead is using a landscape fabric like a heavy duty weed barrier all over the garden and give that a try and see if that will help control our weeds. This was the area that we grew 200 onions. Did we harvest 200 onions? No. It was more like 50 onions that were actually edible. What went wrong here? I think that we just had too much rain. The drainage on these raised beds is really good. I don't know why a lot of our onions became waterlogged and just soaked. It could have been the place where we purchased the onions and maybe the starts were not good starts because I grew onions from seed down in our original garden and they did fantastic. Those were the biggest onions. They had yellow skins. I stored them and these ones were just soaked all the way through. I was able to harvest about 50 to about 75 onions for us to enjoy immediately. Um, but I'm not sure about this area for growing onions. Uh, I think that we just had a lot of rain this year. All right, so I hope this video helped you guys out just to kind of see what you guys can improve on your garden, come up with different ideas, and definitely it, it showed us what we can improve, and that's, that's just it, guys. Gardening is a forever learning experience. And it's never perfect either. Nobody's perfect at it, and hopefully that will encourage you that when your garden looks messy and things go, don't go well, <laughs> that it's okay. We learn from our mistakes.